Hey everyone, I have another video covering the Neo Geo instruction manuals. Before we get to that, I want to give some shout outs to a couple of YouTubers, starting with Aaron Classic Gamer. He does a lot of Neo Geo MVS videos. He also does live streams as well. He had a trivia contest in his live stream last weekend, and I want a copy of Sega Rally 2 for the Dreamcast. And Crazy Cubano, he had a 700 subscriber giveaway contest. And I want a copy of Super Metroid redesign for the Super NES. It's a repro cart. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, now on to the instruction manuals. This time we're going to go over the manuals for the early Neo Geo titles. And based on the music that you're hearing, the first one up is Magician Lord. So let's take a look at it in further detail. We got the storyline here basic controls simple controls extremely difficult game to master As everybody knows this game is brutal it's even worse when you're playing it on the AES here's a screenshot you'll see a timer there but that timer doesn't show up when you play it on the AES it's probably something that you'll see on the MBS but when you play it on the AES, at least the version I have, when you die, you actually have to continue at the beginning of the stage or the last door you entered. So it gets really difficult as opposed to continuing right where you left off. Of course, when you continue when you're left off, you get fewer hit points. Whereas the other way, you do get more hit points, but it makes it really tough to beat the game when you have to continue from the start of a level as opposed to right where you left off when you die. Some of the items to boost your score. Here we got all the different forms that the hero can assume by collecting different colored orbs. And also the different abilities for each form, whether they're Jump speed, attack, strength, how they vary. And on to the stages themselves. Stage three is a pain in the ass. <laughs> but actually, stage five is, is brutal because you have to deal with all the frogmen. And then you have to go to this one maze that is just so easy to get lost in. Last boss. And finally, all the different enemies that you fight. Emulator. The Sheet Devil. Yeah, those are the, uh, the Amphibitrons. Those are the ones that are annoying as hell. We got Diablo. And that is it for Magician Lord. Next up is Blue's Journey, action side-scroller. Probably the closest thing to Super Mario Brothers on the Neo Geo. And here we have the storyline for the game. It is a two-player simultaneous game. Two-player co-op, that is. The objective. You change size to fit through narrow passageways, but you can't attack, but you can also uh, jump farther. Basic controls. We have a screenshot. Graphically, this game is pretty, is pretty awesome. I mean, considering it's one of the first games for the system, it came out in 1990. The levels are very colorful. Lots of parallax scrolling, and you have a lot of variety in the stages. These are the different types of items you can collect. You get invincibility, just like Super Mario Brothers. The game does have a lot to offer. I mean, for an, for an arcade game, for a, a side-scrolling arcade game, there's a lot in terms of items, enemies. There's a lot of variety in, in the enemy types in terms of their movement and attack patterns. You have multiple weapons that can all be upgraded. 
you also have this game also has split paths so you won't see the entire game in one playthrough this actually would make a great console game. And the areas and the bosses. And that is Blue's Journey. Next manual we're gonna look at is the Super Spy, which is a first-person action game. Here is the storyline. Takes place in the Todoya building, which is a pun on the word Toyota. That's some um, artwork there. Super Spy User's Manual. Okay. The objective of the game is to kill terrorists, pretty much. <laughs> yes, this game does get criticized because it is very repetitive, and there really isn't much var variety in terms of the types of enemies that you encounter. Also, the levels. Uh, you basically pretty, pretty much are, are inside a building and after a while they just all ends up looking the same and here is a screenshot of the action I mean it looks nice I, I like the graphically it does look nice you have weapons a lot of exploration it is a long game it'll take about two hours to complete it's one of those games that you you're better off just playing playing it bits at a time makes make use of the memory card you have different weapons fists knife handgun and machine gun and how to use them your best bet is to always go with a knife even though when you use your knife it wears out but it'll never break And there's a little map of the building. You have all different types of rooms. They'll have people in their hostages that'll give you information. Sometimes they'll have to fight enemies. You can also gain weapons and health in there as well. And the characters that is you. And these are some of the bad guys, the terrorists that you will encounter. Geese. Hmm. Wonder if that's can't be. And King. And that is the Super Spy. Next up is Cross Swords by Alpha Denshi, their main third-party developer. They made some pretty cool titles like Cross Swords, Blue's Journey. The Ninja Games, Combat Commando and Masters, and here is the storyline. Of course, the World, he World Heroes games, which are pretty cool. Cross Swords, like Super Spy, is presented in a first person. Well, Cross Swords, ha ha you have a wireframe character similar to Punch Out. But it's the gameplay wise, it's fairly similar that you attack, dodge, all that stuff, block. And this is an action game which has RPG elements in it that you can gain gold to buy weapons, experience points to raise your maximum number of hit points, and you get to use magic based on the sword that you have. And here is a screenshot of everything you see. It is two player simultaneous. Uh, one problem is that you're restricted to your half of the screen. You can't cross through each other. Cross Swords 2 does correct that, but I don't have that game on the Neo Geo CD because I don't own that system. And they did release Cross Swords 2 for MVS and AES. They did a, uh, a conversion of it, but I don't have it. It, it, it bit out of my, bit out of my price range, but it would have been nice to have. Your items to restore your hit points, magic points, gold, so you can purchase items and also restore your health as well. Characters of the game. 
You have your tradesmen who will come out in each stage where you can purchase your weapons. And speaking of which, here are the weapons. Each weapon has a specific magic spell assigned to it, whether using fire, mist, thunder, barrier magic, which really does come in handy late in the game when you have really aggressive enemies. Each uh, weapon allows you to use the spell a specific number of times depending on the weapon, but you can get items that will restore your magic. And the levels. The levels are a well, well detailed. You have a large character sprites. They're animated well. It's not nearly as, as repetitive as the Super Spy. It is a long game. It'll take around an hour and a half or so to complete. But it's it's more 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 variety in terms of enemies, the, the levels, the weapons. So it's it's more more enjoyable experience. The last stage is is, is a nightmare because you have to go through every boss before you get to the last boss. And when you're playing it on the AES, you only get one continue. So if you use up that one continue, you got to start over again from the last point you save if you're using a memory card. And then you have pretty much gonna have to go through that whole process again and again. It's it's a pain. And on the MBS, you could just continue, just continue, continue forever. So it's much easier in that aspect to complete the game. And of course, these are the monsters that you'll deal with. And that is Cross Swords. The last manual we're gonna take a look at is Alpha Mission Two. This is an overhead shooter. And it takes place in the year 2525. So we're still a long ways from that. Got some artwork here. Here we have the control scheme. It's a shooter that you have to attack enemies in the air and on the ground, similar to games like Xevious and Dragon Spirit. But you can also set the control scheme so that you can attack enemies in the air and on the ground at the same time to simplify things. And here is a screenshot of the game. Graphically, kind of reminds me of, of Blazing Lasers or Super Star Soldier. Difficulty setting. This is, this is not an easy game. It is pretty difficult. The enemy movement and attack pattern sometimes could throw you off. I get caught off guard very easily a lot of times. And here are your power-ups. You can increase the speed of your ship, your main weapon, missiles, gold, because you can purchase additional weapons in this game, which is unusual for a shooter to be able to buy weapons. And items that will allow you to warp ahead, warp backwards, and retain your firepower even after losing a life, which does come in handy in this game. And the unusual feature in this game is the way you can earn additional weapons by collecting pieces of armor. You have to collect three pieces of armor to get a weapon upgrade, but the thing is you have to collect them consecutively. So if let's say if you have a uh, fire or let's say shield, you have to collect those three pieces in a row. So let's say if you collect two fire pieces and then you get a, you collect the shield piece, then it'll start, it'll, the shield will replace the fire. So you have to start over. So you have to, you'd have to collect three of the same in a row. And when you get three in a row, you'll have that extra firepower in your inventory and you could select it. And when you have it, you get additional firepower and also you get protected from enemy attacks for a short while. And these are the different types of armor that you can use. When you complete a stage, you can also purchase these items. You can purchase this armor as well when you complete a stage. So there's two ways you can actually earn armor in this game. And levels, although there are no, sh no screenshots of them. These are ships. Enemies. And that is Alpha Mission 2. That is all for now. I hope you enjoyed this. And as always, thanks for watching.